Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Twisby Aurora. This is uh, my first limited, like super limited edition Twisby. Um, I do have some uh, limited edition 580s uh, and a, a mini, stuff like that, Ecos. They do a lot of limited edition colors, but this is um, one of only two limited edition pens that I know about. They've done this, the Twisby Aurora, which is a... Um, a resin kind of pen, really, really pretty material here. And then they've done the Twisby Micarta, which I've been looking for for a while, but I can't find it at a reasonable price. So when this one came out, I'd snatched it up really, really quick. So we'll go ahead and go over what I like about, what I'm neutral towards, what I dislike about this pen. And uh, before we do all that, we'll go ahead and jump into a size comparison. So here's a capped size comparison with some other uh, similar piston fillers. Um, one a little bit more expensive, the Lama 2000, one a little bit cheaper now, the Conklin um, Word Gauge, and then of course you have the Twisby Aurora. So it is the longest pin here. It's it's not much longer than the Word Gauge, it is a little bit longer than the uh, Lamy 2000, but it's overall, uh, I would say a medium large size pin um, when capped. It's, it's pretty robust, um, pretty wide, and it's not super big, but it's it's definitely fairly sizable. Sorry about that, guys. I had to reframe it just a bit. Anyway, um, here we have an uncapped size comparison. Again, it's larger than the word gauge. It's a lot larger than the Lamy 2000 um, in terms of length. Um, in terms of width, it's fairly similar, um, especially to the word gauge. It's a little bit wider, but the section width is fairly similar. And overall, it's, again, kind of a, just a medium large size pen. All right, on to what I like about it. So first up, the nib and flow. Um, I've never had any issues with Twisby nibs. These are great. Um, this nib's very smooth. It's super, super wet. It is a medium, and I'll show you a writing sample for sure. Um, this is the first black coated Twisby nib that I've seen. And that's one of the things I like a lot about the design is this, this black trim on the pen. Um, it kind of sets it off. All it really has is the 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 nib, the uh, clip here, the cap band, and then the band around the piston. They are all that kind of black metal, and that does actually match up with the packaging here. It is uh, kind of uh, black packaging with gold accents. Very uh, minimal. Very interesting little box there. Probably one of my favorite Twisby boxes. The inside's the same as um, the actually. Um, let me go ahead and show you, because it's not quite the same as the 580. It's a lot more akin to the Eco. It's this plastic clip box um, with a green uh, paper liner. So, sorry, I've only opened this once. So it's it's a bit unique. Um, it, it appears that they actually modified the insert foam for the Eco and that's what they came up with. So very interesting packaging as far as Twisby is concerned. Most of their um, pens above the Eco come in that kind of plastic Apple-esque packaging. Um, this here kind of thing. So I, I, I like that they did a little bit of a change up for this pen. The size and weight of it are really good uh, to me. I, I really like the size of this pen. Uh, the section is a nice width. It's, it's tapered here at the end. I really, really like that. It's a good size, good weight. It's not super heavy, but it does have that um, aluminum piston inside of it, so it adds a bit of weight. It's not too back heavy. It's fairly balanced. Um, it can post fairly securely, but I do wish it posted a bit more deeply because it is extremely long when it is posted. It sits out quite far past your hand, um, so I never use it like that. But again, the size um, is just fine to use unposted. The material on this pen is super, super interesting. I'll try to get you a, a close-up here of some of the uh, more interesting bits of it. So they have like these underlying cracks going through it. Um, there's no crack in the material. It's not rough or anything like that, but it's just interesting. Um, this over here reminds me just a bit of an Arca pattern, the way it's kind of uh, looping into the, the larger triangular-shaped thing. It's just very interesting. Um, some parts of this pen are really, really gorgeous. Some are a bit more toned down. Um, you know, it's just, it, it's kind of like almost any really fancy material pen. There's going to be parts where it's really, really 
you know, it has a lot of depth, a lot of swirl, and a lot of chatoyance, and then some parts where it's just a bit more bland, and then you have another, you know, really, really gorgeous part. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice mixture of a, kind of a sleek, streamlined look, and then something with a bit more pop. I really like the material on this. I'm not sure what they're using, but it's, it's one of my favorite resin materials I've seen. It has a lot of depth, a lot of very interesting aspects to it, and it's, it's very nice, very robust feeling plastic. Uh, Twisby, in my opinion, are pretty good at making their plastics. They always feel pretty durable. This is probably the, the most durable Twisby I've held before, if that makes any sense. It just feels very robust, which is interesting. The fit and finish on this is great. As usual with Twisbees, it's fantastic. There's no seams, or I mean there's a seam, but there's no um, sharp edges or anything where it meets the ink window there. Everything fits together real nice. The threads aren't sharp. There's not really any gapping or anything right here around the uh, piston band. The cap fits on super securely. There's no wiggle or anything like that. It's just, it's really, really nice. Really, really, really nice. Um, another little thing that they've done that I haven't seen before, I believe it was done on the Micarta as well, but other than that, I haven't seen it. And that's this like kind of uh, etching or I'm not sure how else to describe it, but it's like cut into the material. Um, they did it for the Twisby logo. Which I, you can kind of see there, the T is a, a little bit washed out because the material has a bit of a light spot behind that. And it's also, for their logo up top, done that exact same way. I can actually take this cap off and show you just a bit better. So it's done that same way. It's, it's a very interesting, um, super high contrast way of doing stuff. Um, because the, the parts where that's cut out aren't polished or anything, so it comes out this kind of white scratchy look. Um, it looks really, really nice in person. It, it doesn't look super great on camera now that I'm looking at it, but in person it looks fantastic. Last thing I really, really like about this, um, the price. These pens were $100 for a limited edition, really pretty resin piston filling Twisby fountain pen. That's pretty good. Um, I will say if you're trying to pick one of these up, you're going to have a hard time. They, they were gone in literally, I think, a, less than an hour. Just completely sold out. Um, again, they retailed for $100. I did find uh, one eBay listing for $232, which is a lot. Um, and I, I've seen some other places where it sold for $170, $180. You're probably going to pay a little a little over one between 150 and 200 I would say, for this pen. Um, is it worth it for that? It depends. If you really like Twisby, I, I think that's a good price. Or not a good price, it's an okay price. Um, if you're not in love with the brand, you don't already have a bit of a collection going, and you're not super interested in this material, don't pay that much for it. $100 is a great price for this pen. Uh, $150, $200 is a little bit much unless you're a Twisby collector. Because um, for $150, you can get the Lamy 2000, which as far as writing experiences go, um, is better. But this is still a very, very nice pen. And I, th I think even at $200, it would be not a terrible purchase. On to the neutral. There's only one thing here, and it really, really bothers me. And that's that they went with a number five size nib on this pen. It just looks weird to have this gigantic pen and this little baby nib. So let me show you here the, uh, the Conklin word gauge that I was referencing earlier. It has a number six size nib. Now, this nib would look a lot better on the body of this pen here. I mean, it, the, the nib looks fine on, on this size, but on a pen this big with a smaller nib, it looks weird. I just don't get why they didn't go ahead and use uh, a number six size nib. Uh, for example, like they do with the Twisby VAC 700, um, it would make it a bit more swappable for you, although I love Twisby's nibs. I really probably wouldn't swap it out. But, um, you know, that that is a thing, and you can unscrew this. Um, you may be able to swap this out with the 580 nib units. I haven't tried, and I'm probably not going to because I don't want to break anything. But, um, yeah, I really wish they'd gone with the number six size nib. That's that's strictly preference, but it, it kind of bothers me just a little bit. On to what I dislike about the pen. Um, only one thing here, and that's that the material doesn't line up. Where it's it just it doesn't. You can make the uh, cap and the body line up if you align them just right. 
So you can kind of get cap and body lineup, but this last little bit with the piston doesn't. You'd have to unwind it, and it just it kind of irritates me. Um, they didn't they didn't do that. It's not a big deal, but I really wish they had cut it so that everything lined up a little bit better. Um, similar to how my Pelican does, uh, you know, when it lines up on one side, it's going to line up on both. It's just a nice little touch um, when you're dealing with a material like this that is a bit uneven. So I wish they had done that. Not a huge deal, but I would have liked it a lot more if they had actually made that material line up and gone through the effort to make sure everything fit together well. All right, on to the writing sample. So we have the Twisby Aurora. With a medium nib. That was that skip right there was me. That was not the pen. And you can get a little bit of give out of this nib. Surprisingly, it's probably the softest Twisby nib I've ever used. You can get a little bit of line variation. And I'll show you here with a reverse writing line, a normal writing line, and a line with some pressure. You can get a bit of variation out of here if, if you push it a little bit. Um, but it's it's not super flexible, but it's one of the softer nibs that I've used. It's super, super wet. I really, really like writing with this pen. Um, the nib's fairly smooth. It does have just a touch of feedback. It's a little bit um, more feedback even, say, the uh, Twisby Go that I have or my um, Twisby 580 with a broad nib. But it's not bad. I, I really, really like this nib. Very enjoyable writing experience with this pen. All right, on to the conclusion. So, what do I think about the Twisby Aurora? Um, I think it's super, super interesting. I, I honestly hope Twisby doesn't make this a regular occurrence in their line. Um, and that's just because I think having these kind of weird one-off editions, like the Micarta, um, like this one, it's just it adds a bit of interest to the brand. You know, they have their standards. They're they're known for their see-through, completely clear piston fillers, or their you know their vac fillers, stuff like that, at very good competitive prices. So when they release something that's a little bit more expensive, um, a little bit more unique, or maybe not unique, but a bit more non-Twisby, I think it should be kept to a limited edition. Uh, run. I know not everyone's going to agree with that, and I completely understand. You know, if you want to get your hands on this pen, you might not be able to, and that's going to be frustrating. I completely understand that, but I think it adds something to it when you do finally get that pen. You know that you know, hey, me and I don't know how many of these may were made, but like me and fifty other people, you know, have this pen. So it's it's really interesting. I wish they had done something like a bit like a numbered series that we could tell, but it's just a very unique pen, very very cool. And if you can find it for a reasonable price, go ahead and pick it up. I think it'll add a really, really nice piece to anyone's collection, especially if you already have a Twisby collection. Um, if you're trying to get all the Twisby pins, you probably already have this one. But if, if this is the first Twisby pin that appeals to you, that works too. It's a very, very good pin. I don't think you're going to go wrong with it. Um, thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions or anything about this pin or any other pin, just leave them down in the comments. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you like my, my content here, and I uh, hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys. Bye.